Matthew Holt, THTV Spotlight with another Brit, another expat Brit. This is Paul Johnson, CEO of Lemonade, um, a company probably most famous for being the landlord of Smack Health's employees, what I found from it last year. Perhaps you have some other attributes as well. <laughs> so Paul, uh, when I first met you, you were building the company in a bus station, South of Market in San Francisco. Um, and the company has come on leaps and bounds since then, but you are in a, what's now a very interesting crowded space, which is the online, uh, on, access to an online clinician and also access to online uh, pharmacy and drug delivery. Um, and a couple of other players in your space have just raised huge amounts of money and you are joining them, although not quite such a huge amount of money as, as some of the others. But tell us, you have a new round today, so tell us the, uh, tell us the new round. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you for having me on. So um, you're right, we're no longer in that tour bus depot, but um, we, we still like to think of our culture as being a little lean and scrappy, but, um, but we have just raised $32 million uh, in Series B financing being led by the Digital Healthcare Fund, Olive Tree Ventures, and um, that's closing on Friday. All right, exciting. So when, uh, when, when you went out looking for my, so well, I'll ask you about the business, but just on the money. You want to look at money. Olive Tree is best known for doing stuff in Israel, which is a hell of a long way from San Francisco. I know there are no venture capitalists in San Francisco or the Bay Area. <laughs> How did it end up that you ended up with a, with a, with a, with a lead that's uh, sort of unusual, hasn't done too much in the U.S.? <laughs> um, so we were looking for a lead investor who had experience in digital health. So we, uh, we have this vision that healthcare is moving online. Primary healthcare is going to be predominantly delivered online in the future. And we really wanted a lead investor in our series B round who realized that and can help us um, position ourselves for that um, over the coming years. A series A round was co-led by Novartis Venture Fund and Hickam Ventures two fantastic strategic investors. So we were looking for a, um, a more traditional VC investor who has experience in digital health. All right, and they've certainly done a fair amount of that. Um, they're also in Taito and some others I know. Anyway, uh, let's talk a bit about your business. So uh, we were talking, I think, a year or so ago, and uh, there was, it was already picking up very fast. So for those who haven't used Lemonade or don't know it, just tell us, what's the basic transaction that you cover? Yeah, so, so at a high level, we're, we're, we're a direct consumer online healthcare company providing primary care visits and medicine delivered to your home. So rather than having to go and see a doctor in person, you can use the Lemonade Health app for a range of clinical services. And you have the option of going and picking your medicine up at a local pharmacy or our own pharmacy could mail and deliver it to you. One of the things that a little bit unique about us is our team is fully integrated. We employ all of our medical team full time. They work exclusively for us. Um, and we own and control and operate our own pharmacy, which again is fully integrated. So you get this online care team combined with our patient support team and get um, a great experience when you use them. Yeah, and I'd, I'd add in that you, go, you have got a, a kind of question and answer algorithm that gets you to the right type of, uh, of, of care provider in the end of the day, which makes it pretty quick and easy for the um, the consumer, but also on the back end means that uh, your clinicians can deal with a lot more people than a traditional telehealth visit. Um, having said that, there are a bunch of other people who, you know, have, have come into the space where we, we're joking about hymns and Roe and others, you know, raised huge amounts of money lately and done a lot of TV advertising. Um, how would you distinguish yourself from those sort of the, those, those companies who are also in the direct to consumer, you know, prescription drug plus uh, obviously this space? Yeah, I think there's a few differences. As well as us having that fully integrated team, we have a very broad service offering. So we're helping patients for clinical services like depression, anxiety, as well as sinus infections, urinary tract infections, as well as some of those other services that, that the other companies are offering as well. As part of this Series B round, we'll be launching into more chronic areas of care. So we'll be launching the first direct consumer services, helping patients who have high blood pressure, helping patients with high cholesterol, asthma, and type 2 diabetes, which again, I think further moves us in the direction of, of, of core healthcare services. So oh, before we get there, because that's really interesting, we're going to talk about how this market's breaking up, and, and I've been uh, looking at this for a while. Just give me a sense of where you've been. I think uh, you were telling me a couple of years ago that you were seeing sort of five to ten x growth in the business. Um, there were some. There's been some numbers banded around about Rose revenue numbers, which may or may not be true, but in the sort of high two hundred millions, which is pretty considerable when you give, give it something when you look at sort of some of the uh, 
where Teladoc and Lamonga, some of the publicly traded companies are not that much ahead of it. Can you give us a sense of where you guys are in revenue in terms of numbers and growth? Um, in terms of our growth rates, the last two years we've grown about six and a half X um, over that period. We've helped now a million patients get access to more affordable, more convenient healthcare. Um, and that's something we're really proud about. In the next two years, we want to help 10 million patients. So, so we really see this Series B raise as a, as a kind of step change in terms of growth for us. All right, you're gonna tell me the number for now or next year? Not, not, not for now, no. <laughs> All right, well, we'll keep digging. Um, when the S1 comes out, I'll be noticing that. <laughs> the SPAC document or the whatever people are doing now. Uh, so let, let's dig in a bit to the issue right there. So I just mentioned some, some names there, right, including some people, and I think you guys were well ahead of them in terms of thinking about the whole patient rather than just selling Viagra online. Um, having said that, uh, there are a bunch of other players, and I mentioned some other names, who are now in, that, in a, uh, the conjoined space, right? So if you take someone like a Doctors on Demand, they've been talking about doing primary care, uh, sorry, chronic care management uh, as well, using telehealth, uh, including working with Humana and folks like that. If you talk about uh, Livongo, they are doing chronic care management, but not the telehealth piece, but going off to their telehealth partners for a wide range of, range of conditions, obviously diabetes being their big one. And now you're seeing people doing this stuff with muscular still either like hinge health, just generating big rounds. At the same time, you've got a lot of uh, companies who are relatively new like you in the primary care space and talking about the IORAs and the Oak Street Health and kind of the public. And, um, and then you've got a bunch of other even bigger players who are joining in that market somehow or other. Walmart's doing something here. Um, you've got uh, the, the folks that... Uh, at uh, Amazon doing a deal with Crossover Health, we've got now an online and offline uh, activity. This is getting kind of crowded and where one thing starts and other thing stops, the more you get into sort of basic chronic care management and basic primary care is a big question. So where is Lemonade going to uh, start and stop? What kind of services are you going to be offering and how are you going to distinguish them from all these other people? I think one of the first things to mention is pre-COVID, 0.4% of doctor visits were handled virtually in the US. So I think it's important to recognize that there are lots of different players and different approaches. At the same time, it's important to recognize that certainly pre-COVID, those players were operating in, in essentially 0.4% of the market. So 99.6% of the market in terms of doctor interactions were still happening in person. And that is the opportunity in our mind. So we fully expect many additional uh, different approaches to how we really help patients get access to more convenient healthcare through digital channels, because there's the 99.6% of doctor visits that we can go after to try and address that. So the approach that we're taking is, is first of all, managing the patient holistically. We want to become that first port of call for patients in the future, where if a patient is seeking out healthcare, they see if they can get it through Lemonade first. And if they can't, we'll help you, help guide you to where you can get it or what you do need to do and help manage that whole process for you. That's, that's where we're getting to. In order to do that, we need to offer a range of primary care services, which we do, a number of urgent care services that we do, and then chronic condition services as well. Both the medical component as well as the coaching and care team delivery of that as well, fully packaged. Um, and that's what we're going to be doing. So uh, that, suge that suggests, a uh, uh, couple ways I want to go, that suggests that you, know, you are starting to move towards some of, the, some of the, what we're seeing as being these coaching services. And you know, a lot of money gone into the Lovongos, the Amadas, even the Vita Health, you know, the other, and a bunch of others, you know, in different conditions. So do you see that as being competitive or complementary to it, to those kinds of services, to where you're going? Are you going to be the front door to guide people to things like that, or are you actually going to be delivering enough of that that those folks will you would say, you know, this is this is something that we would also be doing? And do you think they may come your way? Um, so I so our core competency at the moment has been the doctor medical component of the experience with the medicine delivery. Um, we're definitely interested in understanding where we can partner to complement that with the coaching and, and other support requirements that we need. If we can't find partners where that fix is, is, it will, will work for us, then, then we'd have to look at how do we build that ourselves. But I certainly think um, we'd love to see how we can partner with organizations to, to wrap around the, the competencies that we have. 
Okay, and then in the online offline piece, uh, you were telling me that you, you've always been totally online to this point with your own pharmacy, your own medical group, your own uh, uh, algorithms and, and, and care paradigm behind that. Um, it, it, what's going, what's your, do you think your future of lemonade in the online and the offline space, the, the physical real life space that not rather take part in the moment? <laughs> We, we believe that the future of healthcare is going to be a combination of online care and offline care. We think that the first entry into healthcare is going to become online. At the moment, it's typically offline. Um, we believe the first protocol is going to be online, but you need some offline infrastructure in order to deliver a significant amount of healthcare. So we're building our first physical location it's in uh, St. Louis, in Missouri. It's a licensed pharmacy. We're going to be creating some experiences that we call, I think you also just said the phrase, online to offline. Um, we, we're arguing whether we're calling it online to offline or offline to online, um, but either way, it's O2O. And, uh, and we're basically figuring out how we can use our centralized online care team combined with physical infrastructure, testing, tools, equipment, and a pharmacy team to deliver even more than we could deliver independent of those two things. And I think that is the future of digital healthcare. Yeah, I think that's I think that's very interesting and probably the, the, the right place to go because it's it's gonna be a blend. Um, let's talk about the, the the last thing before we before we close is uh, paying for this stuff. So traditionally you guys and I have a chart similar to which I actually have your price list and I have it against a bill that I was sent by my pediatrician and basically the same lab test costs about a tenth on your the the visit in the lab test on your site cost about a tenth of what it did for the from what medical or the pediatrician or I was using. And you've traditionally at this point been a kind of cash pay service for people below the deductible. Um, when you're going into things more like chronic care management and they're not just the one off IV UTI or whatever, I need a birth control pill, but something that's more, more sort of regular, maybe birth control is a bad example because presumably you are taking out on a regular basis, but you know, instead of the occasional uh, visit for people who are basically healthy to have an acute episode, you started to move into some of these chronic care issues like um, depression, some of the other ones that you mentioned. Do you have to think about how you're structuring this in payment for insurance and, and uh, how are you working with either insurers or end payers like employers? Where, where do you think that the future of that sort of payment part is going? The way that we look at it is in two parts, the, the doctor visit experience and then the medicine that the patient yeah, um, might require as part of that doctor visit. On the doctor visit, our, our strength is our technology platform. As you mentioned at the beginning, our technology platform helps guide our doctors and nurse practitioners to make clinical decisions um, that are more efficient clinical decisions, often more accurate clinical decisions than they would be able to make in, in a traditional healthcare setting. And that allows us to keep the cost uh, low, which allows us to compete with insurance co-pays at cash pay prices. And, and, and that I think is the really exciting opportunity there. On the medicine side, one of the things that we'll be doing as part of this series B raise is start to take insurance reimbursement for patients wanting medicine through our um, delivery services. That's something that we don't offer at the moment. We're looking at how, how to do that um, because certainly, as you mentioned, as we move into some of those chronic conditions where it makes much more sense for patients to use insurance for a lot of those medication needs, um, it's important that we offer um, uh, some options for, for patients to, to be able to do that, as, as well as uh, as a complement to them going to their typical retail pharmacy and picking up your medicine in person. When you move, um, when you move into the rest of, uh, sort of chronic care management, coaching and stuff, and some of the other pieces, that, uh, are you anticipating strong relationships, strong relationships either with employers or with, uh, or with insurers, or are you pretty much going to stay in the direct-to-consumer lane for the moment? Um, we've historically been direct to consumer because we've been focused on building this amazing patient experience, the best patient experience we could possibly build, and focus on building it with the patient in mind. We're now starting to transition and look for partners that we can work with, uh, self-insured employers, other employers, um, and absolutely would love to explore opportunities there. All right. Well, uh, you're, you are, I think, uh, 
casting your net into the maelstrom of American healthcare, um, <laughs> rather than taking off a piece, uh, of, uh, a new piece. And uh, you've been you've been in this country long enough. I've been in this country a long time. You've been in this country long enough to know what a, what a mess that is. So uh, you're making your life deliberately more complicated, <laughs> but uh, hopefully you're going to make your life somewhat simpler for some of the pa for some of the patients and the people who are using your services. Um, so uh, I've been talking with Paul Johnson. He's the CEO of Lemonade, Lemonade Health. Just announced a $33 million uh, Series B round today. Paul, good luck with this. It's going to be an exciting year, and hopefully one day we'll be out of our living rooms and go back to uh, having, having a pint discussing what we're, <laughs> what we're doing in a more interesting place. Matthew, thank you for having me on. I hope so too.